Welcome to the Gene Scene. Meet Chromie and meet Meg. Today they're going to explain why Meg's hair is the color it is. Let's take a closer look. Chromie, can we zoom in on Meg's eyebrow? That's good. A little closer, please. Look at all those cells. All of a person's genetic information, their DNA, is here in the nucleus of the cell. DNA makes up the genes within a chromosome, and some of these genes determine your hair's color and texture. Here comes a polymerase enzyme to take the first step in creating Meg's hair. DNA provides the step-by-step -step instructions or a blueprint for how Meg's hair will be made. This DNA blueprint is coded in four chemical letters, T, A, C, and G. The polymerase makes a copy of the blueprint by using the same letters but switching T for U. By matching these letters to the DNA strand, the polymerase assembles a chemical message for making protein called RNA. But protein isn't produced here in the nucleus, so the RNA takes a trip out to the cytoplasm where a special process translates this message and begins building the proteins for Meg's hair. The coziness of the ribosome is where it all takes place. In a genetic matching game, transfer RNAs carrying different amino acids try to match the message. When there is a match, the transfer RNA passes its amino acid to the next one in line. Next, the ribosome slides down the length of the message and the whole process starts again. Each amino acid is a single unit of the growing protein. And believe it or not, there are only 20 kinds of amino acids that make up all of our body's proteins. Now this whole process happens hundreds of times a minute in every living cell. It's happening in every single cell in Meg's body and in all our bodies. And this lucky protein is only one of dozens that make up Meg's hair. Our differences are determined by the differences in our DNA. DNA is what makes us, us. It's why some of us have brown hair, while others have blonde, or red, or black, or even pink. Right, Meg? <laughs>